2021 paper two, question seven. Uh, let's fill in some information onto the diagram. First, what we know is that the swim is four kilometers from C to B. And we know that the run is uh, from A to C, which is 28 kilometers. In part A of the question, it's asking us to show that the total length of the course is 62 kilometers. So that basically means we need to find how long or what the distance of the cycle was. Just putting down some information about the cycle. We know that the speed is given in the question at 25 kilometers per hour. So that's the speed of the cycle. Um, the time of the cycle, we also know, and it took one hour and 12 minutes. I'm just going to convert that into a decimal, which is 1.12 uh, out of 60. So 12 over 60 minutes, which is 1.2 uh, hours. And the question then is asking us to get the, the distance of that cycle. And I'm going to look at my distance, speed and time triangle. And the question is asking me to get the total length, which is the same as distance, which basically is asking me to multiply speed by time. So distance is given by speed multiplied by time. And in this particular question, my speed is 25 kilometers per hour, multiplying it by 1.2 hours, which is giving me a total for the cycle of 30 kilometers. And the question then wants us to prove or show that the total length of the course is 62 kilometers. Well, let's just double check that. So total will be my 30 from my cycle. I have my 28 from my run. And I'm going to add on my four from my swim. And when I add those three figures together, I get 62 kilometers. And that's what they wanted me to prove. Scrolling down now to part B. Uh, on, an average, on average, Mary can run 5.6 times as fast as she can swim. It takes her 4.8 hours to complete the course. Find her average swimming speed in kilometers per hour. Okay, so we what do we know here? So we know that the full course is 4.8 hours. They've given us that. We know that the time for the cycle from up above in the question is... Uh, 1.2 hours. We converted that in part A. So if I take them away from each other, I get, what, 3.6 hours. And that would give me the total time to complete the swim and uh, the run. So the swim and the run together took 3.6 hours. So that's something we know. So I'm just going to write that down. Swim plus run is equal to 3.6 hours. Now in the question it says that Mary runs 5.6 times faster than she can swim. So if we kind of look at our formula for time, so again I'm looking here at my distance, speed and time triangle. If I want to find time, I'm looking at distance over speed. So if I look first of all at maybe the swim, what would that look like with my swim? So the distance of the swim is four kilometers. And the speed of the swim is unknown to me. I don't actually know what that is. So I'm just going to put in maybe an X to represent the speed of the swim. I don't know what it is. Let's look now at putting back in my plus sign. And then I'm going to examine the run part. So I'm putting in my swim plus my run. That must equal to 3.6 hours. What about the run? Again, I'm focusing here on this time and the distance is 28 kilometers. We have that again from the top of the question. And I'm not gonna now put it over speed. Again, I don't know what the speed is, so I've called that X. But look at the question. It tells us that her speed is five times, 5.6 times faster than the swim speed. And I've uh, apportioned X as the speed of the swim. So that means basically then that the speed of the run is 5.6 times faster than it. So basically I'm multiplying it by 5.6. So I'm going to change this to 28 over 5.6x. 5 times 5.6 times faster than the swim. And that is going to equal to my total, 
uh, time for the swim and the run, which is 3.6 hours. And now you can basically see that I have an equation with two fractions in it. And I'm going to basically put that 3.6 over 1 to make three fractions. And how do we solve uh, algebraic fractions? Basically, I need to find my common denominator. And my common denominator here is going to be 5.6x. That's my common denominator. And I'm basically just going to rewrite my three fractions. So my first one plus my second one equals my third one. Now, the middle one is already over 5.6x, so I'm not doing anything to that one. So it just stays as 28 over 5.6x. The first one, though, is going to change. It's 4 over x, so I need to multiply uh, top and bottom by 5.6. So 5.6x, and in the top I had a 4, and I'm now going to multiply that by 5.6. So if I multiply the bottom by 5.6, I need to multiply the top by 5.6. And coming over to the 3.6 hours, it was over 1, so I need to put that over my common denominator, 5.6x. So that means I need to multiply the top by 5.6x. And working that out, uh, 5.6 multiplied by 4 is getting me 22.4 over 5.6x plus 28 over 5.6x equals um, 20.16x. Um, over 5.6x. Now I'm going to drop my denominator because they're all equal to each other. So therefore, I basically just need to solve the linear equation 22.4 plus 28 equals 20.16x. Adding the left hand side gets me to 50.4 equals to 20.16x. And to solve for x on its own, I divide both sides by 20.16. which basically gives me a value of x as 2.5. And if you come over to the left-hand side here, I assigned x as the speed for the swim. So basically, my final answer is basically the speed of swim is 2.5 kilometers per hour. And that's basically what the question wanted. If we go back up, it says find our average speed of the swim. So 2.5 kilometers per hour. Uh, looking now at part C. So, show that the angle ACB is equal to 116.5 degrees. Give your answer to one decimal point. So, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sketch out my triangle rather than moving back and forth to the top of the page. So, we have C, A and B. Filling in what I know, that was 4 kilometers. We had 28 kilometers and we solved that to be 30 kilometers. They basically now want me to find the size of the angle C or show that the angle C is 116.5 degrees. I'm going to use my cosine rule for this. My cosine rule from my log tables is written as a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cos of a. And my a is the side opposite the angle. So 30 is going to represent my a. Uh, angle a I'm going to change to my angle c. And the 28 and the 4 are my side B and side C. So filling that in, I have 30 squared equals 28 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 28 times 4 times cos of C. 30 squared is 900, 28 squared 784. 4 squared 16, 2 28 times 4 is 2 2 4 cos c. I'm now going to add 7 8 4 plus 16, which gets me 800. So I have 900 equals 800. Don't take away that 2 2 4 from the 800 because it's stuck to the cos c. Um, so I need to follow my rules of BIMDAS here. Multiplication comes before subtraction. So that's why I'm not subtracting it there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take 800 away from both sides or move that 800 over. So that gives me 900 minus 800 is equal to minus 224 cos of C. So that's 100 is equal to minus 224 cos of C. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by minus 224. So 100 divided by minus 224 
is equal to cos of c. And to get c in its own, we're going to use tan inverse. So tan inverse, you can turn that into a decimal. I'm going to leave it as the fraction though. 100 over minus 224. And the inverse of that is giving me an, a size of an angle of 116.51. And the question wants it to one decimal place. So 116.5 degrees. Uh, looking at D, to comply with safety regulations, the region inside the triangle uh, must be kept clear of people. Find the area of this region. So we're looking basically for the area of a triangle. Uh, we don't know the perpendicular height of this triangle, so I can't use half the base by the perpendicular height. So the formula that I'm going to use here now is area of triangle as half uh, A, B, uh, sine C. Again, from our log tables, the area of a triangle when we know one of the angles. And filling that in from my picture up above, the area of this triangle is going to be half times A, which is uh, 4 times my 28 and times the angle between them, which is sine of 116.5 degrees. And when I work that out in my calculator, I get an area of 50.1 kilometers squared. Again, question wants it to one decimal place, so just make sure it's 50.1. Uh, scrolling down now to part E. Uh, part E is telling us the find the shortest distance from the point C to the side AB in my triangle. So again, let's just very quickly sketch out that triangle so we can visualize it. And we have 28 A, C, 4, B, and 30. The shortest distance from the point uh, C to the line AB is this line here. And the shortest distance will always create a 90 degree. So basically that red line is perpendicular to the side AB. And for this one, I'm going to come back now. I know that the area of my triangle is equal to 50.1. I have that from part uh, D up above. So I'm going to use that. But I'm actually going to come to my other formula for area. Area is equal to half the base by the perpendicular height. And that perpendicular height is that red line, basically. So I'm going to fill that in. Area 50.1 equals half the base the base of this triangle will be my AB, which is 30, times the perpendicular height, which would be this new red line that I've drawn in. And I'm just going to call that uh, P for perpendicular. So that gives me 50.1 is equal to half of 30, which is 15 times P, which is 15P. And P then is equal to dividing both sides by 15 which gives me a perpendicular height or shortest distance, basically, is what we've found, as 50.1 divided by 15, which is 3.34, but it wants it to one decimal point, so 3.3 kilometers. So the distance from C to the line AB at its shortest distance is 3.3 kilometers. And there's one last part to it, part F. The course is viewed from a camera tower which rises vertically from the point A. So this is our tower here. The top of the tower is point T. The angle of elevation of T from B is 0 0.05. Find the height, the distance basically, of AT, the vertical height. So there's key words there. Vertical meaning it's going to create that 90 degree angle. So it's going basically, if you think about it, from the top of the tower and the angle is going to B. So I'm basically looking at this triangle here. The triangle I'm looking at is going from T down to A. That's the height of my tower. Then it goes, it's vertical, so it creates that 90 degree. And I'm going all the way over now to my angle or my corner B. So that's basically the triangle I'm looking at, ATB. We know some information about it. So from the previous parts of this question, we know the distance from A to B is 30 kilometers. We don't know the height of the tower. That's what they're asking us to find. So I'm going to call it X. We don't know anything about uh, T to B, but we know that the angle from B to T is 0 0.05 degrees. So we've those three pieces of information and it's a 90 degree triangle. So I'm looking at my trigonometric ratios here, basically sine, cos and tan. So we know that sine is O over H, cos is A over H and tan is O over A. 
And if you look at your triangle, filling in the pieces of information opposite is going to be AT, that's opposite the angle, hypotenuse opposite the 90, and adjacent is my 30 degrees. So I'm basically using the 30, which is my adjacent, so that has cos and tan, and I'm also using my opposite, which is O in tan and sine. So basically you can see there, I'm using tan. So I'm going to look at tan of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent, which gives me tan of 0 0.05 degrees is equal to opposite, which is my AT or X, I'll just call it AT, and adjacent of 30. I'm going to put my tan 0 0.05 over 1, simply cross multiply to solve these fractions. So I'm getting 30 times tan of 0 0.05 is equal to the distance AT. And when I solve that, I'll just keep going this way, make it a little bit easier. Hopefully you can understand all that. Uh, 30 multiplied by tan of 0 0.05 is giving me 0 0.02618 kilometers AT. Because don't forget that this uh, course is measured in kilometers. But the question though doesn't want it in kilometers, it wants it to the nearest meter. So I need to convert that 0.0 2618 kilometers into meters and we know that there's a thousand meters in a kilometer so I'm going to multiply that by a thousand which gives me 26.178 meters and the question wants it to the nearest meter which is 26 meters so the height of that tower is 26 meters and that's us finished